Hi, welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, we're going to talk about the one-sided limits of functions. I'm actually doing this because I keep get, getting a lot of requests about uh, one-sided limits of a functions because this is actually one of the most celebrated topics in senior high school students uh, in mathematics. So um, I just like to let you know that this is for all of you guys, for those senior high school students and those who are in college taking up calculus. So the one-sided limits of a function. So before I'll start, um, I would like to thank you uh, for all um, your support. And for those who are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. And again, I still don't have my plans with me right now. But I would just like to know, I would like to share this one here below. This picture that I have this plant here. Okay, so that will be my feature for this video today. So what is really one-sided limits of a function? Okay, by the way here, when we're considering with a limit of f of x, as x approaches a, we are actually concerned with uh, values at um, x equal, not equal to a. In an open interval, i that contains a, that are close to a so this is the concept of um, getting the limit of a function f of x as x approaches a now um the concept of getting a limit of a function f of x is actually that we're actually taking all the values from the right of a and from the left of a okay so that's why we call that as two-sided limits however there are instances where a given function f is not defined in any open interval containing a so in these cases we are only led to consider only um either those values that are um of x that are greater than a or less than a okay so an illustration for that um let's consider a function f of x that is equal to square root of x plus one okay in this given function, if you notice, um, at x um, less than, let's say, negative 1, let's, um, what are those? We can consider negative 2. This given function is not defined. So that means at x um, that is less than negative 1, the function f is not defined. And, and if x is greater than or equal to negative 1, the x can also can be defined here. So this is defined here. This is not. Okay. So in this case, we're only led to consider the values at the right of negative 1. So meaning to say, if we're interested to get the limit of a function f of x, so this is the limit of x plus 1, a square root of x plus 1, we're only considering the values at negative 1 from the right. So this is an example of a one-sided limit of function. So we're only considering the, um, the right side, those values from the right of negative 1. So we indicate the symbol plus to indicate that that is the right side of negative 1 because the limit at x plus 1 from the left of negative 1 is not defined so we only consider this okay so we will introduce here with the formal definition of one-sided limit of function so um, given that you have a function f so let f be a function for which um, is defined at every number in some open interval AC uh, respectively b a okay then the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right respectively from the left is l and we write this symbol respectively we have the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left is l okay if for every epsilon, 
however very small, there exists a delta greater than zero such that the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon whenever this is the interval, respectively this. So what does it imply? So let's start first with the right. So according to the right, if you have a, a function that is defined at every open interval, uh, it's not at every, uh, in some open interval rather. So that's all. The open interval for the right is A to C. Okay. So that means, um, here's the uh, indication. When we talk of the right, the interval is A to C. That means the A at which the function is approaching to is the starting interval here. Okay. Then the limit at f of f of x as x approaches from the right is L and we have this symbol. So this plus here is to indicate the right. So if for every epsilon greater than zero, that is very small, there exists a delta greater than zero such that the absolute value of f of x minus L is less than epsilon whenever um, this is the interval here. x minus a less than delta but it's greater than zero. Now if we talk of the left, that's different. The interval is b to a. That means the function at which it's, it is approaching to is on the end of the interval. So it starts with b to a. Unlike with the right, it starts from a to c. Okay. Now if it's the left, this is the symbol. So the uh, minus is to indicate the left. And um, it's still the same with the right. Uh, if for every epsilon greater than zero, however very small, there exists a delta greater than zero such that you have this absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon whenever this is the interval. a minus x is less than the um, delta and um, it's greater than zero. Okay, now this uh, explanation, um, the geometric explanation of this uh, definition for one-sided limit of function is actually the same with the formal definition of a limit of a function I have discussed on a previous video. So somewhat, that's the same illustrations that I have shown on the previous video. So you may you might want to check on that. Um, I have the thumb thumbnail there, here. Okay, so okay, we will consider an example here. Um, let's say if we are interested to evaluate the limit of x minus 1 all over the square root of x squared minus 1 as x approaches to 1 from the right. Okay, so we can have this one here, the limit of um, x minus 1 all over this x squared minus 1 which is um, inside the radical sign, I can um, make that as x plus 1, x minus 1. That means I factor them out as x approaches 1 from the right. Now, I can rationalize this uh, rational expression here. So, I can multiply this by um, this. So, I can multiply the denominator by the same one so I have now if why am I multiplying this with um, the square root of x plus 1 times x minus 1 all over the square root of x plus 1 times x minus 1 okay so if you notice this is equal to 1 here okay so nothing is changed on the function um, the reason why I am multiplying that because I want to rationalize this thing here. And the reason I want to rationalize that because I want to simplify in order for me to evaluate on the limit of this given function. So what happened is um, the numerator becomes x minus 1 um, multiplied by um, this is um, x squared minus 1 all over and this denominator of course square root and a square root so this will be this so basic algebra only and then um this is the limit of x as uh, the limit of the function as x approaches one from the right
Okay, so in this case, I can cancel them out. So, I would have now um, x squared minus 1 all over x plus 1 here as x approaches 1 from the right. So, in this case, I can now um, substitute here. So, I would get um, 0 over 2, which is equal to 0. That's it. Okay, so now that we've understood on the concept of the one-sided limit and we have uh, shown an example for that, let me introduce to you first the theorem here. The theorem simply says that um, the limit of a function f of x as x approaches a, okay, so this is a two-sided limit, exists if and only if the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right and the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left exists and are equal. Okay, so let's double check the example here. Um, that's limit of x minus 1 over the absolute value of x minus 1 as x approaches 1 exists. Okay, so that is our qu uh, first question. Okay, so now let us recall first that the definition of the absolute value um, of a given um, number, this is equivalent to um, negative x, positive x, if x is less than 0, and um, this is x if greater than 0. Okay, now this thing here would also be applied to this given function. Okay, now um, in order for us to um, understand if the, the limit of this given function here exists, now we will use the theorem above. Again, the limit of f of x as x approaches a exists if and only if its right and its left limit exist and are equal. So let's double check. Let's evaluate the function x minus 1 all over the absolute value of x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the right. Okay, what is the right? So we're actually working on the positive side of um, x. So in this case, we consider the absolute value which is equal to positive. So what happened is x minus 1 over x minus 1. Okay, now uh, this is equivalent to the limit of 1 as x approaches 1 from the right. This is a limit of a constant, so this is technically the same as constant. Now, let's evaluate the limit on the left side. As x approaches 1 from the left. So this is from the left, so we're working on the negative side. So in this case, this will be limit of x, um, x minus 1 over negative of x minus 1. In this case, this is negative 1. So th they both exist, however, they're not equal. Therefore, this does not exist. That's it. Okay, so let's consider another example. Um, does the limit of, of the absolute value of x plus 1 all over 2x plus 2 as x approaches negative 1 exist? Okay, so let's evaluate the sides. Okay, let's start first with um, evaluating the limit here. And this is x negative 1 from the right. So when it's from the right, meaning to say that this absolute value will be eliminated, but it's still positive. So this will be cancelled out. So you get 1 half. However, if we take the limit um, of x plus 1 and x um, negative 1 from the left, so if it's from the left, this absolute value will be eliminated, but this is negative here. So this will be cancelled out and you get negative 1 half. 
So they both exist, however, they're not equal. Therefore, this limit does not exist. Okay, another example. We're not working on whether the limit exists because we are going to evaluate the limit at which the x approaches to negative 9 from, I'm sorry, to 9 from the left. So in this case, in order for us to solve that, we're going to simplify first the equation. Because why? Why what happened? If we are going to substitute right away on 9, this becomes 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. So what are we going to do with that is we're going to simplify first on the function. So remember, um, your x minus 9, I can write that as square root of x squared minus 3 squared. Okay? And then um, by special product formula, this is square root of x plus 3 times square root of x minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to do that in this way. So, here. So, what happened is, I can cancel this out. And so, I left with, this will become 1 over square root of x plus 3. And this is x approaches 9 from the left. So, this becomes 1 over 6. Okay, so, we're given with another example here. The f of x is... And this is equal to 2x squared when x is less than 1 but greater than or equal to negative 1. And then this is equal to 3 minus x when x is less than 2 and greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so we have another example here. Uh, we're going to solve for the f of x. And this is equal to 2x squared when x is less than 1 but greater than or equal to negative 1. And this is um, 3 uh, minus x. When x is less than 2 but greater than or equal to 1. So in this case, um, uh, let's solve first the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the right. So when it's 1 from the right, that means it's greater than 1. So we will consider this condition here. So in this case, we are using this. So 3 uh, and the answer is 2. Now if we are uh, go interested for 1 from the left, so we are solving this. And um, this is still 2. So they are equal and so the limit exists. Okay, so let's consider another example here. Um, you're given with f of x and this is 4 minus x squared when x is less than or equal to 1. And then um, this is 2 plus x squared when 1 is less than x. Okay, so 1 from the right. So that means it's greater than 1. So therefore, we use this. So that is uh, 3. And when 1 from the left, that is uh, less than or equal to 1. So we use this. So that's still 3. Therefore, the limit exists. That's it. Okay, so that's all for now. Um, thank you so much for watching. So if you have any questions or clarification, you can comment down there so that I would know and we can discuss it thoroughly. And uh, we will continue with this Alka Alkilo series. So thank you so much. Have a great day.